Hi, everybody. My name is Danette Siegel. I'm a member of the Save the North, Bo North Shore Birth Center Coalition. I'm a mother of two birth center babies. And, I'm a, and I am a birth doula for this community. On May 11th, Beverly Hospital and Beth Israel Leahy Health announced plans to close the North Shore Birth Center, the building just behind me over here. They left pregnant patients on their own to navigate new options for prenatal care and the birth of their children. On August 2nd, as a result of pressures from this community, our elected officials, state health officials, and maternal health experts, the health system agreed not to take further action toward the closure for 90 days. But Beverly Hospital also announced they would not accept new patients or reinstate former patients during this period. We're here today to give current and former pregnant patients of the birth center a platform to share their struggles they have encountered in accessing comparable, high quality prenatal care. And to illustrate how Beverly Hospital and Beth Israel Leahy Health are severely missing the mark on providing the high quality patient centered care they claim is at the foundation of their operation. The hospital administration is either completely out of touch with what their patients are actually experiencing or they're spreading misinformation within this community. Just yesterday, Beverly Hospital President Tom Sands stated that expectant patients have a care transition plan. We are aware of no such plan. The hospital has done nothing to support the transfer of care, nor ensure the continuity of care as they had promised their patients. Many former birth center patients are not receiving high quality care and certainly not comparable care to what they would have been provided at the birth center. I personally have spoken with dozens of impacted patients and this is the message we are heard, we've heard again and again. Most alarmingly, I have spoken with patients, some with higher risk pregnancies and who have not been able to access care on the standard recommended timeline. At each step in this process, the hospital and Beth Israel Leahy have shown a total disregard for the people they're actually impacting. Leaving pregnant women to navigate a provider change mid-pregnancy and some even in the last weeks of pregnancy. Pregnancy can be a stressful and delicate time in a person's life. I can't believe they have put pregnant patients and their families in this position that they're in. By denying their patients access to out-of-hospital birth and midwifery care, and by not providing continuity of equivalent care, Beth Israel Leahy is putting pregnant patients and babies at unnecessary risk. There are birth center midwives in the building behind me who want to provide care, and patients who want to receive that care. So what is standing in the way? The North Shore Birth Center is a vital maternal health service. Beth Israel Leahy Health continues to assure that community, the community that they can replicate it. How can we trust them when they've already shown they can't even, or they can't, and even worse, harm patients in the process? We are asking Beth Israel Leahy Health to do better. We are asking Beth Israel Leahy Health to put reproductive health before your bottom line. We are asking Beth Israel Leahy Health to come up with a real plan to successfully operate the birth center. Yes. Yes. Thank you all so much for being here today. I'd like to, I'd like to now introduce Brittany Conant to share her story. I think she'll be okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brittany Conant and I am a Gloucester resident and I am 35 weeks pregnant with my second child. Um, I am one of the few remaining patients of the North Shore Birth Center. I have not transferred my care to another practice because I've been holding on to the ounce of hope that Beverly Hospital and Beth Israel Leahy Health will start showing that they care for the patients the way that they claim. 
My family chose the birth center because it aligns with my beliefs and what birth and maternal care should look like, but also because I've spent my fair share of the time in the hospital as my dad battled cancer for eight years. I'm not a sick patient in need of care. I'm a mother with a low risk pregnancy that now only has the option to give a hospital birth because of this closure. Almost exactly two years ago today, on August 26, 2020, we welcomed our daughter into the world in the calmness and peace that the birth center provides. It was the most empowering, natural, and beautiful thing I have ever accomplished. Almost, um, today, Beverly Hospital has robbed me of this experience. If I wanted a hospital birth, I would have originally chosen the hospital. Closing the center and then saying that I can receive the same care in the hospital clearly shows how the administration does not have an understanding of why patients choose the birth center in the first place. I am being forced into a hospital setting simply because I do not have the privilege or financial ability to pursue an out of hospital alternative, though a home birth or, or through a home birth or birth center in another state. My due date is September 27th. The birth center midwives were told by administration that their positions would be terminated by September 8th, the original closure date. With this information, midwives have rightfully sought new employment. And I know that the hospital is making no effort to keep the current midwives or to recruit new ones to continue to provide care for their current patients. My question for the hospital is, who is actually going to be available for me to help me deliver my baby? Will it be the care of midwives that I have chosen or will I be forced to transfer care just days before my due date? Why doesn't the hospital's plan match the due dates of their current patients? I should be spending the final months of pregnancy with my daughter and preparing the, my body for labor and delivery and getting as much rest as possible before my new baby arrives. I should not be standing here. Yeah, see the babies? I should not be standing here at the hospital pleading for my health care. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. I'd like to now introduce Courtney or Corey Algar. Hi, Corey. 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 Oh, Sorry, I'm short. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, my name is Corey Algar. I'm a resident of Salem and I'm 16 weeks pregnant with my second child. When I found out that I was pregnant in May, I was ecstatic. I approached this pregnancy with more ease, knowing that I already had a birthing team I trusted and a birth plan I knew that they would support. When I reached out to the North Shore Birth Center to share the good news and get my first prenatal appointment scheduled, I was crushed to learn about Beth Israel's decision to close the birth center. One of the midwives called me and walked me through my options, but I was devastated and left the call in tears. My dream pregnancy and birth had been ripped away from me. Not only did I need to find new providers, but my plan for a water birth this time was over. There's nowhere within a manageable driving distance that allows for water births and accepts my insurance. I've now transferred my care to Essex County OBGYN, one of the only alternatives Beverly Hospital has provided for birth, shore, uh, birth center patients. My experience has been less than ideal there. The staff seems overworked and overrun. I feel like a cog in a wheel at their facility rather than a valued partner like I did at the birth center. After three appointments, I still not, have not even been able to meet with a midwife because of their, they have not been available. I've been in near tears in the waiting room at every appointment, thinking about how the sterile environment is compared to the nurturing and warm presence of the birth center. When I had appointments at the center, I was always met with smiles and by name. While at Essex County OB, the receptionist interrupt you, kind of like that. The receptionist interrupt you to get through your onboarding as fast as possible, and the staff doesn't even wait for you in the waiting room door before they've turned your back on you and started walking towards your exam room with not so much as a greeting. At one appointment, I had to wait over 45 minutes past my appointment time because they were so backed up. And needless to say, there is currently no opportunity for a water birth, nor do I feel that my desire for one has been validated. 
Beverly Hospital has assured the community that we will still have access to comparable care after the closure of the birth center. I am here to make sure the public knows that when they say this, they are lying. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. I would like to now introduce uh, Pamela Siren. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Pamela Siren and I'm a resident of Salem. This is my husband Ian and I'm 33 weeks pregnant. I've been a patient of the North Star Birth Center since 2020. My last appointment was in June of this year, around 23 and a half weeks pregnant, when I was forced to transfer my care. Before this pregnancy, the birth center midwife supported me through two losses, for fertility testing, and prior trauma. They know me and they know my history. At every visit, they continued to check on my mental well-being. Anytime I called or messaged through the portal, I was taken care of almost immediately. Less than three months away from my due date, I was forced to start over. Because of my health insurance, the way health insurance is structured in the state, and the extremely limited access to midwives in our community, I'm left with only one option, which is to deliver here at Beverly Hospital. So I feel that my choice has been taken from me. Beverly Hospital has stated that all birth center patients will be supported in access accessing equivalent care. I have not received any support from the hospital during this process. I am absolutely not receiving comparable services and I'm not even receiving care under the standard recommended guidelines. When I transferred my care, I had to go six weeks without an appointment, six weeks of not knowing who to go to, six weeks of not having those important checks on my physical and mental health or the health of my baby. I have had difficulty scheduling appointments with delivery midwives at my new practice. They're just not available. More recently, I had to go three weeks without an appointment, even though the recommendation is two weeks. And I still haven't scheduled my final two appointments in October before my due date because the scheduling is not available. So I don't know what's gonna happen there. Unlike at the birth center, I do not get a home-like labor and birth experience with less interventions. I do not get to try a water birth, which is something I really wanted to do. There are no delivery tubs at the hospital. I don't get to recover in the comfort of my own home. And importantly, the increase in cost to deliver at the hospital is astronomical. I will be forced to stay at the hospital and be considered as inpatient care. Money shouldn't be a factor in this situation, but for my situation, my husband's situation, money is absolutely a factor. Beth Israel, or Beth Israel Lee Health could have kept the birth center open until all of their current pregnancy or current pregnant patients have their babies. They could have used that time to work with the community, work with legislators to find a sustainable solution. They chose not to. They have forgotten about us, they've abandoned us, and they should be held accountable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pam. I'd like to now call up Corey Kennedy. Hi, Corey. Good morning. My name is Corey Kennedy. I'm a Beverly resident and I am 17 weeks pregnant with my second child. I was fortunate enough to give birth to my first child, my daughter Irie, at the North Shore Birth Center in October of 2020. In the midst of a global pandemic, I had a safe, calm, and peaceful haven for my prenatal care and was able to pursue the birth that was right for me and my family. The amazing midwives supported me in a beautiful water birth with no medical intervention whatsoever. Two months ago, I found out that I would be bringing another child into this world. Over the moon and filled with excitement, I called the North Shore Birth Center to schedule my first prenatal appointment. That phone call quickly took a turn as I was informed that the birth center was closing on September 8th and that I wouldn't be able to deliver my second child there. As I sat in tears waiting for a midwife to call me back to go over my options, I was no longer filled with happiness and excitement. Instead, I was filled with sadness, disappointment, and fear. What I learned when the midwife called me back was that if I wanted to give birth to my second child in a similar setting to the North Shore Birth Center, my closest option is an hour away in Salem, New Hampshire. With my job, my husband's job, and caring for our daughter, that's just not feasible. I'm now left with a hospital birth as my only option, which I'm not comfortable with. 
For me, hospital settings are the furthest thing from calming and peaceful, and it is not the environment that I want to deliver my child in. I am fearful that unnecessary medical interventions will be imposed upon me and that I will not be an active participant in my own health care. I've had three prenatal appointments with the provider that Beverly Hospital has suggested provides comparable care to the North Shore Birth Center, and I don't feel that I'm receiving care that is comparable at all. I truly feel like I am just a number. For one of my appointments, the office double booked patients and I was left waiting for 45 minutes to be seen. There is a midwife there that used to work at the North Shore Birth Center and I thought scheduling my appointments with her would be one way of feeling more comfortable through this new process. So far, I haven't been able to schedule a single appointment with her and I have appointments booked all the way through December. At each appointment, I've told the provider that I am transferring my care from the North Shore Birth Center. I have inquired about the possibility of having a water birth at the hospital, and no one can seem to answer the question. If tubs aren't made available, I don't understand how I can be told that I'll receive clinical services that are comparable to the birth center. Beverly Hospital doesn't support unmedicated births like the North Shore Birth Center does, and I don't trust that my birthing plan and requests will be met at all, especially if a water birth isn't even an option. Beyond my own personal feelings and fears around a hospital birth, statistically the North Shore Birth Center provides better birth outcomes for women with lower risk pregnancies than Beverly Hospital. So why is this safer, more affordable option being taken away from pregnant women and putting us and our newborn babies at risk? Why is our choice to take a more natural approach to prenatal, labor, and delivery care being taken away from us? Is it about profit? Because that's what it feels like. It no longer feels like my prenatal care is about care at all, but more about money. And I think we can all agree that a woman bringing a child into this world should never be about profit. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Uh, our last speaker is going to be Katie Murphy. She's the president of the Massachusetts Nurses Association. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, thank you. Which one is this one? <laughs> thank you. Good morning. I'm Katie Murphy. I'm the president of the Massachusetts Nurses Association and also the mother of three children who came into this world with the support of nurse midwives. I'm here to speak on behalf of the nurses and midwives of Beverly Hospital hospital and to lend support to the community. North Shore Birth Center has been an essential service offering a family focused holistic birth experience for mothers and babies of this community for decades. My midwife colleagues, colleagues who have had the honor of working in this service are proud of what they have provided to this community and want it to continue. Other speakers have eloquently described what the birth center is and the importance of keeping it open. So I'm going to speak to the reason given by the company that owns the hospital in explaining their decision. They say there is no limit to the demand for our birth center. They say the only problem has been their supposed inability to recruit and retain staff. Heard that before. To address the, the problem, we pointed out that they were offering wages far lower than other employers of midwives. Then our union helped solve the problem by winning the corporation's agreement to raise wages by as much as 27% immediately in the second week of May. Then eight days later, they announced the closure. The the company recently announced that they were reassessing their decision to permanently close for 90 days. That was met with joy. But then when we asked management to meet with us about their plans, they put it off for the entire first month of the 90 days. Yep. We told them that the midwives have job offers elsewhere and they would like to stay if the center is really remaining open. We also told them this in writing. The M&A not only supports but is deeply committed to the successful reopening of the birth center and the continuation of the in-house midwifery program. If the administration confirms that, provided that the retention and recruitment of midwives is solved, then the birth center and the in-house midwifery program will remain in operation into the foreseeable future. Then M&A will immediately begin working with the administration to accomplish exactly that. <laughs> 
If you confirm this, then we are confident that working together we will be successful. The midwives are out there in the community and with the substantial improvements in wages and benefits just recently negotiated, the primary obstacle is already solved. We'll be able to recruit. I will let the response from B.I. Leahy's attorney speak for itself. The hospital has not rescinded its previously filed DPH closure notice, but as you are aware, has agreed to engage in additional conversations to further discuss the numerous challenges around the feasibility of long-term operations of the birth center with state and local leaders and members from the community. The only suggestion we can afford, offer on this front is that the midwives should make the decisions that are best for them and their lives based on the facts as they exist today. This is not what we expected and it is not the response this community deserves. They should make the commitment today that if we retain and we recruit, which we can and will do, then the birth center will remain open. Thank you so much, Katie. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today and showing your support to all these beautiful women and people and families that have been affected by this closure or the announcing of this closure. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up for any questions, um, either to the patients or to the coalition or to the Nurses Association, any of the above. Thank you, that's a wrap. <laughs>